the cat's best kept secret. We are flying high above the hills and valleys near Cullowee, North Carolina, looking for a special place. Enjoy the view as Harold Sims and his pilots search the landscape below, looking for a hidden treasure obscured from view by lush vegetation. As we fly above this beautiful landscape, we see dense, uninhabited hilltops and isolated valleys. Here and there, we see signs of civilization, a single home or a cluster of buildings, wide expanses of open land, and roads and trails that crisscross the hilly terrain, but no secret place. The treasure we seek is hidden in a grassy cove deep in a valley. It's a secret place that any stray cat or one surrendered by its owner would be lucky to find. Known as the Catman 2 Shelter, Adoption Center, Sanctuary, and Art Gallery. It opened at this site in 2002 and is one of the very few animal shelters in Western Carolina devoted to the sole care of cats. At conception, Catman 2's mission statement barred the sheltering of dogs within hearing distance of the cats. It was to be a place where a cat would be able to relax and never have to endure the sound of barking dogs and suffer the fear that at any minute one may attack while it waits to be adopted. During the past 17 years of operation, more than 3,500 cats have enjoyed the solitude of a Catman 2 shelter, and almost all of them have found the happiness and love in a forever home. The few who were not lucky enough to be chosen enjoyed a safe haven until from the ravages of age they no longer enjoyed a quality of life worth living. Then and only then would the blessing of the shelter staff and their veterinarian was a cat ever euthanized. Today more than 80 cats enjoy the comforts of this home as they await that special person who will come to adopt them. Catman 2 never euthanizes a cat to make space. Each cat admitted to the shelter has a home until his or her time comes. We fly on looking until we find the shelter. We have finally found the Catman 2 shelter complex. In the center, we see the large 4,000 square foot shelter building. Above and to the left is the Catman's home. Down in front and alongside are outbuildings, a barn to store equipment, small sheds, and two rental cabins. Marvel at the beauty of a complex built to provide a safe haven for cats awaiting their forever homes. We circle the complex. What makes Catman 2 unique is that it was not conceived or built by a group of people working together to raise the large sum of money needed, nor were funds donated for construction. Catman 2 was built by a retired junior college biology professor who didn't have the wildest idea of having a second career when he left his teaching job after 22 years in the classroom. The seed that produced Catman 2 was sown by a chance encounter when he volunteered at a local animal shelter in Florida to fill the gap between his retirement and that of his wife's. Most days were spent doing odd jobs. Between tasks, he spent free time hanging out in the cat adoption area. There, he found pleasure in matching cats with people looking to adopt a feline friend and the dream to go on helping cats in the future was born. After moving to North Carolina in 1991, Harold tried volunteering at local animal shelters, but found most of them kept only a few cats. Almost all were 90% dog and 10% cats. When he told people his dream was to build a cats-only shelter in Cullowee, it was suggested he go back to Florida and was told, This is dog country. The only cats people want up here are barn cats undeterred and determined to see this dream come true, he went ahead and opened the Catman 2 shelter. It is truly one of the most unique animal shelters in the state of North Carolina and beyond. Harold hopes it will become a model for all cat shelters to follow. Just came back from the flight now. We're back at the shelter. I want to sort of give you a little tour of the outside before we go inside. You can see we have uh, a car park there and the shelter building is in the background. Uh, the buildings on the side there, the first one is an isolation room where the cats come in, coming in from the outside or put before they get to the vet. 
the one next to it is a laundry room where we wash all the linen and bedding for the cats and stuff, and people that live around here also use the washer for themselves. We have a little bit of a garden we're working on now in the front of the shelter, which is a work in process, uh, not quite finished yet, but people will come to visit the cat shelter, and some people have allergies to cats. They can sit in the garden while the others come in and adopt one, hopefully. Walking around the side here, we're seeing the side of the shelter, and we have uh, big cages in each one of the rooms that the cats are. Uh, there are two uh, separate rooms and one big major room, and the one on the right here is the one of the, the separate rooms. They've got about 20 cats in each one of them. The other room has about 50 cats in the major room. Uh, the cages are 16 by 16 foot uh, wide. They've got vinyl floors, which are waterproof. If it does rain hard enough to go into the room, which is very rare, it runs out through the loops at the bottom, a little crack at the bottom, the water comes out. We, we have a uh, backup generator should the power go off to keep the house, uh, the cats warm winter or summer. Air conditioner is a heat pump, which also heats in the winter time cools in the summertime. We can walk down here to the other, and this is really the best uh, cage in the house, and we can see what we have down here. Uh, these cats have the most beautiful view of all. We'll turn around and look at that in a minute. It's a 16 by 16 uh, cage. They access this by cat doors in the wintertime or by the open door in the summertime when the air conditioning is on. And this is a um, screened in room with a chain link fence and chicken wire inside Chicken wire keeps out uh, birds that may fly into the or large mesh in the a chain link fence. The bird flies in there, he's like a fish in a, a fish trap and he can't get out again because the cats catch him. So we sort of try to keep the birds out to let the cats eat the cat food and forget about eating the birds. Around the back here is our, our storage room for our lawnmower and things We're like that. We're through the main gate now. We have a chain link fence around the outside of the front door of the shelter. This is in case the cat should get loose, it would be caught before it got out into the open and ran away. We do have double doors on the shelter. The very few cats ever get to them past the first door, let alone get out into this. This is just a safety factor. We don't want to lose any of the cats. And here's that garden we're working on. The little red thing is going to be a catnip bed. When the catnip gets in there, we use the catnip to uh, feed the cats. We'll walk in the front door of the shelter and go into the shelter and see some of the rooms and inside of the shelter. This is the front room of the en entrance to the shelter. People walk in the front door and you can see we have another room behind there which is a sort of a meeting room. People can sit on some chairs, they'll be in there later on, take a closer look. But this gives an idea of how the cats have plenty of room to move around. That room is sort of in the middle of the building and it goes around in a circle. You can sort of walk around if you were a cat and want to exercise. You could run around or walk around and do laps, so to speak. And as you uh, go around here, you can just keep on walking. If you're about 20 feet on each one of these sections of the wall. And uh, you turn here at this end and you walk down this way. And you go another 20 feet and you make another left hand turn here. And you go another 20 feet up this way and when you get to the end of the room here you're back to where you started from in the main room. The three small rooms are all the same. There's no reason to look at them all. This is probably the best one in terms of the cat's point of view. You have a bench out here. People can come in and adopt the cat. They can sit on the bench with the cat and get to know it. We'll walk around the corner into the main room here. All the rooms have uh, apparatus to climb up on and to uh, wind, large window sills to lie on, large litter pans to use. We use uh, plastic tubs rather than a small litter box. The cast access that porch you looked at outside through the cat doors at the bottom in, uh, when the weather is not either too hot or too cold. Right now it's summertime, air conditioning is on in the main building. We have the door closed to keep the cats uh, and get the air from going out. And uh, we walk out to this room. You can see that this is the most favorite of the three we have. And there are many cats enjoying the uh, apparatus to climb on. There are benches to sit on. Uh, again, we have boxes out here. This is probably our most favorite spot because all the cats in the shelter that are in the main room have access to this room. And we do uh, alternate the cats from time to time, so 
cats that are in room without the uh, access to the main lobby um, get to come here uh, every now and then because uh, we don't like to have these cats the only cat with the extra space. We have lights that of course can be used at night and uh, keep the door closed to uh, keep in the floor. Main cage area now. We don't use cages that often. This is really a cat without cages shelter. And we do have some nice new stainless steel cages when we need them. And they're larger than normal. This case doesn't require a cage to be more than two foot by two foot. We have the cages at least, uh, uh, these here anyway, these here are smaller, but these large ones here are two foot by four foot. That gives the cat lots of room to uh, get around. I have a new, a new cat came in today. I get in the cage, I'll show them to you. Beautiful Maine Coon. Hey, look up here. Here. Beautiful Maine Coon cat. He just came in the other day. Anyway, we have also have in this room we have a bathtub. We need to wash a cat, give it a bath, to wash dishes, whatever needs to be done. We have the shower here and the uh, pictures on the wall again. And this is a bathroom here for the for the uh, staff to use. We have another bathroom. We'll see later for the public. Going to our main meeting room now. People come in here to sit with the cats and talk about the adoptions and such. And uh, you can see we have uh, lots of artwork on the wall. Hopefully this will be in a museum someday. I'm working on an uh, American Museum of the House Cat, trying to raise some money. It won't be used for the shelter. Any money we raise will be used for the museum and will not take any money from the shelter. We have quite a bit of uh, art. I'll talk, discuss that in another part of the web page someday. But this is a room again about 20 by 20. The upstairs area is just for storage and most of my art collection is up there. This is just a little bit of it down here. We have everything from oil on canvas to cat masks. We have posters. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, little signs. Uh, this is a little pump down here. It's a thing they threw balls at at the carnival years ago. Uh, that sort of thing. We have a fan that keeps the air going around. This thing here, when it's turned on, it's quite noisy, but it keeps the, uh, the air purified. It's got a UV light and uh, other things that keep the air clean. It makes a lot of noise. Lucky to meet Caleb, our only one employee. Our shelter budget runs around $70,000 a year. Income is earned from sales at a small thrift shop we are associated with. We attend arts and craft shows to sell items we have collected, Raffles bring in money for most years, and we do other types of fundraising like car washes, 5K runs, and the like, and from the four books that Harold has published. We receive $2,000 a year from Jackson County, as do all private shelters in the area. We sometimes receive a little money from a small grant, however most of our income comes from donors, and we hope you will choose to become one. We are transparent about the use of our income and are required by law to give anyone a copy of our annual report or you may wish to request a 990 form from the IRS. The 990 form is required each year by all nonprofit organizations, and everyone should request a copy before they donate money to any nonprofit group. I am the only paid employee. This is a labor of love. Harold, our founder and CEO, does not take a salary or other compensation. Any income that exceeds our cost is saved for the future. This is placed in CDs in our local bank in the name of Catman2, Inc. When you finish watching this video, go to the bottom of our webpage to learn more about our organization. You can also follow us on Facebook, where I will keep you up to date on all events. New cats are listed when they arrive, and I will keep you up to date on their progress as they adjust to shelter life. We also let you know of any needs we may have and any events we plan. We appreciate your feedback, comments, and suggestions. If you live in the area, we would love to have you as a volunteer. We need all the help we can get, and there are many jobs you can do. Coming just to pet the cats helps to make them more adoptable. I know one is not supposed to blow their own horn, but we believe that Catman 2 is the best place any cat in need could ever hope to find. People sometimes ask why we spend money on time on cats when there are so many people in need. We reply, for every cat there is a person. The person who brings a stray or a pet they must give up, and the person who adopts a cat and finds a new friend for life. We hope you enjoyed watching this introduction to Catman 2 and hope you will join us in our efforts. Please consider becoming a donor and a member of the team. Thanks and so long.